All right, guys. So I'm back today to give you a little video. Uh, didn't really have nobody to help me video today, but I'm gonna do a ham brine rib like Chud's Barbecue does it, but I'm gonna step everything up a little bit. I tried it a while back. Came out pretty good, but uh, I wanted a more hammy flavor. So I doubled the water. I went a little bit more heavy on the ingredients. I'm gonna do spare ribs, uh, baby back ribs, and then a, a little pork tenderloin too. See how that turns out. And uh, this is two days ahead of New Year's, and I'm gonna cook them on New Year's and hopefully I'll get that real good ham flavor that I'm looking for. Last time they were good, don't get me wrong, they had hints of the ham flavor, but I was expecting a little more, so I'm thinking a little bit heavier on the ingredients and uh, a longer brine will, uh, will get me there. And uh, I'm gonna get these spare ribs trimmed up, get everything dropped in there. And uh, I really wanted to take y'all through the whole process, but it's just me today, I don't have nobody helping me film but myself today so it is what it is anyway i'll get these uh trimmed up i'll bring y'all back in a little bit all right so i got these trimmed up to a decent shape they weren't the best ribs in the world just some shit from brookshire brothers but they're trimmed up they don't look bad i'm gonna go ahead and get these in my brine Just like that. And we're gonna let them brine for yeah, about two days. So I'll bring y'all back here in a minute and I put that little pork loin in there. Alright, I've got my little pork tenderloin right there, a little small one. And hopefully this is enough time to brine it. And now that's in. Good, I'll do the baby back ribs. My wife gets back with them. I went to the store earlier and they were waiting on the truck. They didn't have any, so I'll throw them in later. And the next time you'll see these is when I season them up and cook them. See y'all later. All right, so our ribs are done brining. And the little pork loin, you can see it right there. Let's take these guys out, wash them off, and get them seasoned up. We'll see how they did. I let them go two days instead of one. So let's see if they got more hammy or if I screwed up. We'll find out here in just a little bit. There's my cock. Stay tuned. Alright, I got them out of the brine. This is what they look like. They're the darker color. I definitely firmed up. So hopefully this worked. I'm going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> get these seasoned up. And uh, I'll bring y'all back when I put them smoker. It's a ham brine pork tenderloin, baby back ribs, and pork spare ribs. Coming up. Stay tuned. Alright, got these seasoned up with salt. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Got these seasoned up with garlic and pepper. No salt. They've been brined. Salt and more. They probably won't be edible. So spare ribs, baby back ribs, and pork tenderloin. Ham brine. Shout out Chud's Barbecue. For the inspiration. I'll get these on the smoker. And, uh, put them on the smoker now. First, gotta get this cleaned up. About time to clean the smoker. And there's a reason why I use tin full instead of wire brushes. Uh, last summer, 2020, I had some pork chops on the grill and I used a wire brush to uh, clean my grates. And one of those wires got stuck in that pork chop and I swallowed it and got it stuck in my throat. Spent the whole 4th of July in the emergency room. And uh, make a long story short, I had to wait till Monday to get that wire out of my throat. It sucked. Couldn't swallow. I felt it poking me the whole time, but I finally got it out. And uh, that ain't cool. So yeah, be careful using wire brushes. I don't use them at all no more. Do not use them at all. 
And uh, if I think about it, I'll go see if I still got that pick. Where that wire from? Where that wire was stuck in my throat. Alright, scrunch it up. Spare ribs on. Baby back ribs are on, scrunched up, and our little baby pork loin. is on also. So all the proteins are on. Got some good smoke coming out of there. The kind of smoke I like to start with first. As y'all seen how I build my fires in the last video, so I'm not going to go into that. But... Go ahead and shut the lid, and I'll bring you guys back here in about two hours. We'll look at it again. Stay tuned. All right, so I want to share something with y'all. Here in southeast Texas right now, the wind is hauling ass. And I had my smoker out in front of the barn in the open area over there. And uh, that wind was blowing back through my stack, and I was having hell keeping this fire lit. So I moved it in here out of the wind, and now we're drafting real good, and I got me a good, clean fire burning. Right up there. So, just a little, uh, I guess, tip. It's the first time I ever had to cook in wind that high. I normally don't get that damn windy here unless we have a hurricane. But uh, keep your smoker in a area where it's not exposed to high, high winds, or you'll have hell keeping that fire lit like I was. But we got a low and slow fire. It's going good now. So, just a little update. Something I thought I'd share with you guys. Stay tuned. Alright, I just wanted to show you guys the pork loin. How it came out. Good color. I put a little honey mustard glaze on it. Now I'm going to uh, wrap this thing up. And let it rest till the ribs get done. It's rocking at about a 145 internal temp. It'll carry over a little bit, but it'll be alright. Pork tenderloins are actually a darker meat. You can cook them a little bit longer than you can a regular pork loin, not dry them out. So I'll bring y'all back when I get the ribs done. All right, <clears throat> I just took the baby back ribs off. Now we're gonna put on our glaze, which is honey mustard, made with honey, local honey, not that cheap crap. Regular yellow mustard, and then uh, a little bit of Dijon mustard. Rub it on there like so, it ain't got to be real thick. Just enough to coat it. Then we'll get it wrapped up. I also put some on the tin foil itself. We'll do the same thing with the spare ribs too. Stay tuned. Alright, now we're going to do our spare ribs with the honey mustard. Brush them on. I also put some of it on the foil. The bark is set for the most part, so the pepper will stay. Get it on there nice and good. Like so. And now, we'll flip it over and get it wrapped. Do the other side. Each side down. Lick some of that pepper off my fingers. It got me. <clears throat> Put a light glaze on the bottom. We don't want a whole, whole lot. Alright, guys. There you have it. Now we'll get it wrapped up. Stay tuned. Look how pink it is. 
has it secured. It's gonna should be just like a ham. That's all I'm gonna cut out of that. But it looks like the cure did its job. It's pink. Should taste like a ham. Let me keep going or stop it? Stop it? Oh. Here's the ribs. Looks like we achieved the same thing on the ribs. It's pink. It's cured. And brown ribs. Let's take a little bite. Cream bite. Holy shit. That's good. Damn. Now we got the baby backs. Same thing with the baby backs. They pink. They're cured. Mm. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's it. Turn it off. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is my New Year's Day plate. See these ribs are nice and pink. They're cured. Especially these baby backs. I almost look like they're not cooked at all, but they are. And the pork loin, cornbread, black eyed peas cabbage. Happy New Year's.